This webinar is the first of a series of webinars organized by COPKID for law enforcement agencies and other relevant uh, project stakeholders uh, that will deal with different aspects and topics of the project and that will be properly announced. Okay, today, this the main goal is to present you the project and we will walk you through the objectives and the methodology of the project for a better understanding of the COPKID solution. But first of all, let us introduce ourselves. Uh, my name is Raquel Pastor from the Spanish state owned company ISDEFE, and I'm the COPKID project coordinator. And together with me are Frank Migné from Thales, Netherlands, who is the COPKID technical coordinator, and Corina Panofino and Agata Wurzaska from Trilateral, the partner who is dealing with the legal, ethical, and privacy issues in the project. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, uh, the webinar is structured in three different parts, followed at the end by the mentioned question and answer session. I'm starting by introducing the project and its main objectives. Frank will give you information about the technologies being developed in the project. And after Frank, Agatha will present the COPKIT ethical, legal, and data protection implication and solutions in the project. So, first slide, Corina. <clears throat> the COPKIT project is a Horizon 2020 project that brings together law enforcement agencies that are our end users, industry, academia, and uh, investigation organizations, research organizations, to create an intelligence and knowledge ecosystem for law enforcement agencies in order to support prevention, investigation and mitigation in the context of the fight against organized crime and terrorism. We are collaborating together 18 organizations from 13 different countries and we also count on the support of external advisory boards and we are glad to count on Europol as the leader of our end user and stakeholders advisory board. During a previous project that was focused on the strategic analysis for policy in environmental scanning, the involved law enforcement agencies draw their conclusion that strategic and investigative analysis were intrinsically dependent and that adequate exchange of knowledge between these different levels of analysis could improve their investigation and mitigation capabilities. They identified a gap in methodology and tool to enable the synergy between these levels of analysis. And this became the topic of COPKIT. In COPKIT, then we are attempting to close the cycle that is shown in the, in the slide between the two aspects of analysis. We are producing, you are producing means for both analysts to produce and share knowledge. So we are helping a strategic analyst to fight crime by discover patterns and construct models with the goal to produce context, what we call context knowledge. And this context knowledge helps the investigative operational analyst in their investigations. Similarly, we try to support the investigative analyst on fighting criminal by, by using existing patterns and models and discovering knowledge and elements specific for their cases and sharing his event observation with the strategic level as a basis for the discovery of new patterns. We call this approach the, uh, the early warning, early action led policy, that is the approach of our project. And we have organized this approach in four main objectives that we are going to present. Our objective one is focused on developing the methodological aspect of the early warning, early, early action led policy, as well as producing requirements and approaches for the tools that are the enablers of this, of the enablers of this approach. Concretely, we are chosen two specific use cases for that, that are uh, firearm trafficking and crime as a serving service, and we are using them to demonstrate and, evalu and evaluate our methodology and tools. Our objective two is about developing a toolkit for this. As said, an important part 
an important aspect of this early warning, early action methodology is the production of knowledge. And both type of analysts require tools to help them towards the production of knowledge. And this is true in all steps of the intelligence cycle, from data collection, information extraction, production of intelligence and, and new knowledge, up to the construction of models supporting the assessment of the situation of a specific threat and forecasting of, for the estimation of future threats. So for that, our objective too is about developing a toolkit, realizing capabilities for all these activities. And this, this can be seen as too broad, so, but of course it's very broad. So we are focused on specific subparts, specific data types. And Frank will provide more information on these technical developments afterwards. Our objective three is about making the early warning, early action methodology and tools usable given the actual constraints of law enforcement agencies. In this new early warning, early action approach, different analysts will modify their ways of working to share and incorporate the information provided by other analysts. So their workflow will change and therefore new uh, interfaces, new human machine interfaces are needed allowing them to visualize and incorporate the additional information. Further, it seems obvious that with this new approach, security is a strong constraint, but also enabling law enforcement agencies to respect ethical, legal and privacy constraints with respect to, to sharing. So we are working on the development of innovative solutions for the necessary management of these different types of constraints. Finally, our objective four is about facilitating the uptake of our results by law enforcement agencies. And for that time, we are working on innovative ways to allow the evaluation of tools, and we are also developing the required training for, for this new approach. And now Frank is going in more depth on the toolkit being developed to realize the capabilities required in this new approach. Please, Frank. Thank you, Raquel. Uh, we are now going deeper into the toolkits and the different capability. And if you remind the analysis uh, cycle presented by Raquel, uh, our, the capability needed are derived uh, more or less from this, uh, this cycle. Uh, at first, you have the capability of data collection. Uh, we focus on, the, on dark web collection that we identified as a gap. A capability of information extraction here as well, we've made the choice to uh, focus on, on uh, text uh, and natural language processing. Uh, a capability to uh, store knowledge, search and retrieve it, which as you can imagine is critical given our AWEA methodology. And the capability to use and produce knowledge uh, with three subtopic, the discovery, the estimation and uh, the, the forecasting and prediction. And finally, we are also uh, developing tools to enable tests on real data at the location of the LEAs. In addition to those specific functions, in CopKit, we are also focusing on specific technical approach. Um, Corinna, could I have next slide, please? Thank you. Um, and uh, if you remember that our paradigm relies heavily on knowledge and in particular on domain knowledge and expert knowledge, uh, then the techniques that we are investigating are also supportive of that uh, aspect of incorporation and usage of expert knowledge. Um, there are two ways to do that. One is to make sure we keep the experts in the loop uh, when automating processing. And the second one is really injection of expert knowledge. Um, in AI and machine learning, and especially uh, something that is uh, generally called hybrid machine learning or knowledge constraint machine learning. Um, in theory, this approach has uh, a specific advantage is that uh, if you have a lot of knowledge, then this can uh, alleviate the need for large data set. Uh, we believe that in the uh, use case of, uh, of CopKit and more generally in uh, fighting crime and terrorism, you do not always have very large data set. You do not always investigate only uh, large uh, volume uh, type of crime. Uh, I, will, I will now give you examples um, regarding 
four specific aspects where our project is uh, is trying to uh, show how those techniques can um, can be useful. Uh, one of them is to keep the analyst in the loop. The other one is to uh, do information extraction using use case uh, driven knowledge. Uh, the third one is knowledge constraint assessment and forecasting. And the last one eventually is uh, about sharing uh, with adaptive security and privacy. Let's start with the example of CopKit tool showing the particular importance of, uh, of experts in the loop. And the first tool is uh, an innovative uh, way to do dark web scrapping. Uh, what particularly uh, important, the emphasis in this in our approach is uh, to simulate human behavior on those uh, when scrapping, uh, which is uh, seen as a, uh, a good way to uh, avoid uh, the defense and the mitigation strategy put in place by the uh, by the website uh, owners. Remember, we're talking about darknet market. Huh? Um, and to also enable the, the operator to inject knowledge, focus the search on certain URLs, on certain aspects, avoiding uh, brutal global uh, collection. A second example where uh, the analyst presence is critical is to provide knowledge to the CopKit uh, knowledge base. Uh, about this knowledge base, uh, you can think of, for example, having taxonomies on, of firearms, having uh, specialized vocabulary, slangs used, having modus operandi. And the idea is that um, this knowledge can support especially more, maybe more junior investigators who would not have the, uh, the full expertise to, um, uh, to know all this and also to support, to enable this inclusion of knowledge in automated tools. So it's a formalized uh, expert knowledge. I will uh, now show additional examples uh, regarding how knowledge can be useful for information extraction. I mentioned, uh, as indicated in, uh, in CopKit, we have chose, chosen to focus on textual information um, and could I have next slide, please? <laughs> and uh, you see here an example. And the idea is that um, if you think, for example, of advertisement on darknet market, uh, the language is uh, of very poor quality. The syntax is bad, the grammar is uh, even worse, and a lot of slang is used. Traditional natural language processing will have um, trouble with this type of things. It's difficult to train it. Uh, in addition, the slang, for example, can change rapidly. Um, a way to remedy it to this is to inject the knowledge of the operator. Uh, for example, the vocabulary that they've set up that we've seen in the previous slide. Uh, with a practical tool to provide feedback, uh, it is possible to rapidly increase the quality of the knowledge used by the tool. A second tool where uh, the knowledge is, uh, the, that can be also driven by the knowledge is for association discovery. So now we're more in the, in the field of knowledge discovery and data mining. Um, if you think of finding association, relationship and correlation, in very often, there are many, many correlations and only a few of them are relevant for your domain. Could be, for example, a relationship between certain prices and certain firearms, certain uh, firearms and certain areas of provenance. Uh, by allowing the, the investigator or the analyst to uh, drive the, the tool, uh, we also help the tool focusing its, uh, its attention. Eventually, this approach facilitates the work for the knowledge discovery tool. Uh, in the third example, we're going to focus on uh, knowledge uh, constraint assessment and forecasting. And we will, um, we will start with, uh, with the assessment. Uh, let me first explain what it means uh, for situation assessment. Imagine. Um, no, actually, next slide was good. <laughs> Thank you. Um, imagine you are trying to assess the risk related to a certain advertisement or it's uh, uh, likely to be actually uh, an attempted fraud or something like that. 
the expert has an understanding of the AMO, uh, the modus operandi and the drivers. Uh, machine learning can help you then uh, uh, computing this type of, uh, of likelihood, but for this you need a model. And this model can be built by combining qualitative knowledge, influential context observation, uncertainty, uh, knowledge coming from the knowledge base, and machine learning to actually uh, realize the quantitative part of the model. Uh, among other aspects, those models are more explainable and in theory, they require less data. Regarding forecasting, we are actually trying to use uh, a, a similar approach, which we expect is uh, practically favorable when you have low volume crime. Um, so there again, it's about hybrid machine learning where the qualitative knowledge, such as the variable, the variable influencing a certain phenomenon, think of, um, uh, firearm seizure, for example, the reporting bias, particularly important for fighting crime and, uh, and terrorism, and spatial effect um, is provided by the expert and machine learning is uh, then used for the strength of the correlation and the quantitative aspect. There as well, we expect A, those models are uh, in general more explainable, and we expect that they uh, also are suitable when you have less data. Finally, let me describe what Cockit proposes in terms of sharing with adaptive security and privacy. First, uh, we consider that the, the owner of the data should stay in control of his data and the data should stay in place. So we're, what we are proposing uh, does not include uh, this idea of data lake. Um, uh, law enforcement agency or department or team keeps their own data. However, if you want to share, that means that this owner is able to um, provide uh, publishing services, publish his data in a very fine-grained way. And this is uh, aiming at um, avoiding uh, all uh, or nothing access. Uh, in combination with role-based data access privilege, uh, then this, this fine-grained uh, access can be realized. Um, and if you even add uh, some anonymization service in the middle, uh, then you can even release data that would be sensitive in an anonymized way. For example, for strategic analysts, we don't actually need uh, to see names and uh, accurate location, uh, but would need to, uh, would be able to still use the, the data. And finally, this uh, sharing requires new workflows from uh, analysts because they now have uh, an investigator or case analyst now have to find ways to integrate um, is to integrate uh, context knowledge, and that requires him to uh, modify a bit his workflow. And for that, we also propose solution for the, the HMI. And this slide is uh, uh, as presenting this adaptative and secu adaptive security and privacy um, concept in CopKit uh, makes it very easy to me to hand over the floor to, uh, to Agatha. Uh, we will now uh, describe the ethical, legal and privacy aspects in, in the CopKit project. Thank you, Frank. So Raquel and Frank explained how the CopKey solutions could benefit law enforcement agencies and ultimately the society. Um, but at the same time, the use of technology by law enforcement agencies um, actually raises several ethical, legal and societal questions with serious implications for the relationship between uh, law enforcement agencies, policy and lawmakers um, and the society. And these considerations include such issues as inaccuracy, automation bias, and discriminatory results risk, um, privacy breaches, mass and individualized surveillance, um, reproduction, and further entrenchment of police unequal treatment. Um, also, because of machine learning and algorithms, we have a question of transparency and accountability gap uh, related to black, uh, black box. Uh, we're also uh, thinking about technological solutionism um, and also exacerbate issues of policing, um, such as over-policing of certain areas or population, um, and also exacerbate power asymmetry between police forces uh, or in general authorities and individuals. These concerns may 
ultimately lead to weakened public trust in the police and governmental authorities and damage social cohesion. So having this in mind, in COPKIT, we're working on addressing ethical, legal and societal challenges related to um, the envisioned use of COPKIT as a law enforcement uh, investigation tool. So looking specifically at questions related to um, firstly data, and here we're asking ourselves uh, what types of data and, what ty and how this data should be used by, uh, by, by LIAS. Um, who has access to this data within and outside the police, um, which data sources are used, and to what extent is our digital footprint, um, such as our activity on social media, Instagram, Facebook, um, how uh, is it private and can it be used unconditionally? Um, and also, what are the legal limits of uh, citizens profiling? The second issue is transparency. Um, so we're asking, okay, so how can predictive algorithms reach their conclusions? How do the analysis work? Um, how are they used? And how effective are they in contributing to the uncertainty? The third aspect is uh, related to inaccuracy, automation bias, and discriminatory results. And here we are asking ourselves to what extent may data-driven policing tools contribute to um, stigmatization of people, especially vulnerable and minority groups and individuals and places um, known as hotspots. Um, could such information as our postal codes, um, age, sex, race, employment status, and um, social and family situation be used as proxies for criminality? And how to design such tools to minimize victimization and re repeat victimization? And ultimately, how to reduce automation bias where human decision makers defer to computers and accept recommendations that may be incorrect or biased. And lastly, we're looking at dual use. So how to avoid misuse uh, by the criminals or, for instance, by the public, um, public authorities. And we can imagine um, a situation of democratic countries where the authorities uh, use um, such tools for surveillance of their political enemies. So to analyze this variety of ethical, legal, and societal issues, in COPKIT project, we conduct an integrated privacy, ethical, and social impact assessment of the COPKIT solutions. And actually, we'll have a separate webinar fully devoted to the, the question of ethical, legal, and societal aspects in the COPKIT project. So please stay tuned and uh, join us for, the, for this uh, webinar. Thank you.